Hey guys, it's Drew Drop here, and today I'm bringing to you another review for the Road to Project Z, or rather known as Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I can't, I just saw the reveal, guys. I can't wait for this game to come out. Uh, but, anyways, that's another discussion for another day. But we're going to do the Road to Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So, this we're continuing with the trend with the next Dragon Ball Z game in the line of Dragon Ball Z games for console. I'm not doing handheld. I'm sorry, but if you want to see handheld, I might do it another day. It's just that I don't have that many of the handhelds, but I'm going to do the next main console game that was released on the PlayStation 2, of course, and that will have to be Super Dragon Ball Z. Now, a lot of you guys probably do not know about this game. I actually just recently got this game, like, I think, like, last year or the year before. Because I didn't really know about it until I looked online and I saw that there was a game called Super Dragon Ball Z. And I was like, wait, huh, I did not know this game came out. But basically it's Dragon Ball Z Budokai, but like with more sophisticated combinational um, attacks. So there's the back of it. And if we open it here, you have uh, the disc art, which I actually really do like like that discard. So, uh, basically Super Dragon Ball Z, it's a really different game because this was actually uh, a arcade game in Japan. Like this was released in Japan first and was actually like an arcade game that you could put quarters in and that you could actually like play like, you know, in an arcade. And I, you can tell when you play this game, it really is meant for an arcade because when you play it, you kind of go into like a tower type of, uh, or like a story mode type thing. It ain't really like a long story mode. It's just kind of like a, um, kind of like the towers in Mortal Kombat, if you know what I'm talking about, where you each, uh, fight each opponent. And when you fight each opponent, you go on to the next opponent and then you beat all of the opponents and then you will win the whole game. Well per character. And according to each character, you can get different rewards with the roulette wheel. But also, the roulette wheel has uh, the Dragon Balls on there. You can gather all the Dragon Balls and you can get special goodies out of the Dragon Balls. So that's really, really cool. And not only that, though, the only... Like, there is not that many characters, but like, the characters that are there do get a lot of shine and get a lot of different combinational moves and actually feel unique for the characters that are in in there because it makes you feel appreciative for the uh, creativity that they did with it, such as Dragon Ball Fighters, which will be in another video coming up. But um, So that's what I really like about this game is that you can really just spend time on learning the combos you know, learning all the different ways that you can use these characters, like Vegeta, Goku, and even Boo makes an appearance in this game. It only The story mode only goes up, or the arcade story mode only goes up to sell. It ends at the sell games, but they do have Boo in this game, so you still can play as Boo and all that stuff, which is really, really cool. And uh, Mecha, Mecha Frieza also uh, shows up, which is pretty cool. And stuff, and for the first time ever, we actually get Chi Chi as a playable character. Yes, guys, we actually get her as a playable character, which is insane. I can't, I th can't believe that she ha was actually playable in this game. When per people tar started telling me that, oh, you know, Chi Chi's available in that game, I said, there's no way. That's like saying Oolong is playable, and it was like, no, it, she's playable. I'm like. She can't be playable. And then I looked on there and sure sure enough, she's playable. And I was like, dang, that's that's just that's just cool. Like able to play as these characters that you never really get to play. Like that's just that's just really, really cool about this game. And also I like the the art style of this game. I like the way they didn't just go with the anime art style. They went with the manga art style. They they tr completely changed it up. And the way that the graphics looked and everything were just top notch. The environmental destruction was actually pretty cool. You would actually fight it through this uh, arena and you would actually destroy things where it was kind of like Budokai, but not really because you were kind of maneuvering through a 3D space. But it was also 
in a 2D format. It's kind of like a mix between 2D and 3D, but not really 2.5D either. It's like, I don't know, it's like in the gray area, but like the environmental destruction is crazy. You can knock people through walls, you can destroy a building. It's, like, it's there, guys. Like if you like environmental destruction games, this is the game for you. But um, yeah, like this game, there's not a whole lot in it. There's not a whole lot other stuff that you can get. You can get power-ups. You can get all kinds of other stuff and collectibles. But as far as content goes, this will probably only last you like a few hours at the very least. Uh, I think this is a good game for maybe like competitive. Maybe if you like are you have another person that plays this game or something. Maybe you guys can play like local, which it does have local multiplayer. So if you guys really get into this game, I think that'll probably be really, really fun for you guys. And I think, I'm not for sure, I'm not for sure, but I heard the Japan or the Japanese version actually had a link that you could use for online play, but I think that's only the Japanese version, though. But, uh, yeah, so, as far as a writing for this game... I really don't. I really don't do ratings, but like, well, I, I would have to recommend it for a low price because I wouldn't pay top price for this game. I found this game for ten dollars at the flea market, and um, I say it's worth that price. If it's under twenty dollars, it's worth the price. I mean, it's it's good little fun game for you to play. Is it worth twenty five to thirty dollars? Uh. Not so much. I have to go ahead and say that is way too much for this game. I think you should go at least... The minimum that you should go is at least like $20. Because if it's higher than $20, it's not worth it. I think that if you are going above $20, I think you should just go ahead and get like Budokai 3 or Tenkaichi 3, which is another game coming up. But uh, yeah, I think you just go ahead and get those games. But... Yeah, but if you have the cash to get it and it's cheap, then go ahead and get it because it is worth the few hours that you do get of it. And hey, if you have a lot of people that are fighting game fans and you like to play like local multiplayer or something, you guys get into it, then I think this game is really for you because this is a really good multiplayer fighting-esque type of game, so... So that's it for this review, guys. Uh, go ahead and smack the like down and, and, and stuff and then... His, uh, my dad's social media will be in the description and be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't and uh, yeah the next review is going to be Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2 can't wait guys road to Dragon Ball Z Kakarot can't wait either early 2020 baby early 2020 so I'll see you guys later Drew drop out